just just having the uh, the whatever the luxury of an off-season program this year. What what has it enabled you guys to do? Well, really, it's just enabled us to pick up where we left off last year, reinsert our defense to brush that off, and then polish off what we had had inserted to even a finer level of execution. And we've added a thing or two here and there that gives us something new to work on. Is it dramatic? What do you no, it's not dramatic. Did, did your defense grow in complexity during, during the season last year? A little bit, but not a lot. Um, I would say a little bit. Is it fair to say that the defense was fairly, I don't want to say simplistic, but very basic, and then that allowed you guys to a, play fast, and, and B, not really get hurt by the, the lockout uh, so much. I think there's a few things to make point of there. One, you know, one thing that we did in the uh, preseason that I think helped us a lot on defense, you know, in the preseason you normally practice, spend a couple of your practices dedicated to the opponent in the preseason game. We didn't do any of that on defense last year. We just showed up and played the game. What we did on defense last year in during preseason game week was we just kept preparing our guys for the season. Okay, so we stole two, three practices during those weeks that maybe would have been OTA practices at that time and just kept working on our defense and kept preparing our guys for the season and did not worry about preparing for preseason games. And we just went out there and played basic, simple stuff in our preseason game, which was twofold. One, it allowed us to do that what I just talked about, and it allows us to evaluate our players. With that sort of experience, does it make you rethink how you do it in a, in a conventional year where there's no lockout and not game plan for the exhibition game? Well, we, I never have really game planned very much for exhibition or preseason games, and we will continue to prepare our team for the season. Well, you've been doing this a long time. Have you ever had another experience where you, you have all your starters back on defense? Yes, you know, back in the, uh, like you said, unfortunately, it is a long time. And um, I was in the NFL before there was free agency. So, you know, just an example of when I was coaching the linebackers in New Orleans, I had the same starting linebackers for, four, for seven straight seasons, same four guys. So, you know, being in the league in the 80s and early 90s before free agency, that, that wasn't uncommon. How much of an advantage is it to have everybody coming back and knowing the system? I think it's a, it's, it is an advantage. It's continuity. You know, so much of playing defense is playing off the guy next to you and learning to play within a scheme with the guys that you're playing with. Because every guy has little idiosyncrasies about how they might play a certain technique or an assignment, and, it's an, and the guy next to him or the guy behind him gets a feel for playing off of that. Last year, Ray and Justin played a lot of snaps, and they didn't show any signs of wearing down. But do you need to get more of a rotation there with some of the young guys uh, dispelling them on occasion? Possibly, but I don't see it as urgent. You know, a lot of that goes into um, with the defensive linemen because they are the big guys on the field, and they are the first to get tired just, just because they're so big. Is If you're playing good defense like we were and getting a lot of three and outs or give up one first down and get out. You don't have a lot of the eight, nine, ten play drives against you. They can play a lot. You know, if you're going three and out or five plays and out, those guys can stay in there. But it's when you start getting a bunch of eight, nine, ten or even longer drives going against you and you're getting a few of those in a game, that's when it starts to wear those guys and you would see more rotation. Were you reluctant at all to, to give up uh, Tukwafu and Dobbs to the offensive side a little bit? No, it's it's for the betterment of the team and for the benefit betterment of them professionally and their chances to make in the team. It, it, there is a fine line there to where you know a guy has to have a primary position, and th that's how he makes the team. And then if he can contribute in a secondary role, he does so that way. So we have to be careful that um, you know we don't spread them too thin and they don't master a position on either side, and then they don't end up making the team. So we have to be mind mindful of that. What's the potential of this unit this year? The same as it was last year. You know, I don't think we have anybody on our defense right now that uh, should be descending in their career. We don't have anybody that's old enough that they shouldn't play as well as they played last year or even better. And, you know, and I think Justin's probably our oldest guy, and I would expect nothing but even the same or 
better performance from him moving forward. And I feel that way about all our all our guys are either very obviously young or in their mid twenties, the middle of their career. So we should be as good or better. Do you uh, intend or do you want to bring Brian Banks in for a workout? Uh, I don't know anything about that. That's the first I've heard about that. That would be something for Trent. Okay. Your, uh, Alden obviously played so well so quickly last year. What can he do to, to improve and build on, on last season? Well, he can become a full-time player. You know, last year the season worked out for him basically the way I envisioned it. You know, he got to play in the uh, our sub packages, which he played, I think, 52% of the time over the, our 18 games that we played and did a good job, and that's what I saw. And along the way, he was getting a lot of practice at outside linebacker during each and every week. And he was our, if uh, Paris or uh, Mod went down, he was going to go in, and he had to go in and play about 20 or 30 plays last year at linebacker. So we expect him to become more of a full-time player this year. What does he have to do to be successful as a three-down guy? Master the uh, zone coverages, you know, and where he fits and drops and um, picking up routes, etc. And also, uh, you know, one thing Paris was really good for us last year was playing the run, and he's got to be as good or better than Paris was playing the run. Alden was so effective in that, you know, in the role that he was in last year. Was, was there any thought of just kind of keeping him there and as a situational rusher? No. I mean, if, if it turns out that he doesn't um, warrant the job with his play, then he'll go back to that. But. I think when you have a, a player of his ability, you got to do anything and everything you can to get him on the field more. At the same time, I was very happy with and pleased with what we got out of him last year. That was what I expected. For, for a defensive coordinator at this level of the game, what's it mean to have all 11 starters back from a defense that was ranked fourth in the league? I mean, that doesn't happen a lot at this level. No, not at this day and age with free agency, but it did, like I said before, it ha used to happen a lot. Uh, it's good. You know, our guys are, they enjoy playing with each other. We have good players. They got, they grow, they grew into playing with each other, playing off of each other, being able to communicate in an advanced way as the season progressed. And we would expect that to continue and take it to a, to a higher level. Now, even though that I think we should be better on defense, doesn't mean that we will be, have a better record. That's all that, you know, we could be better, but not have the same record. You know, it's all relative. How much does it help to have this offseason that you didn't have last year? Oh, it helps. It, it helps certain players more than other players. You know, it, it helps Alden Smith tremendously to come out here. He missed this as a rookie. He didn't have OTAs as a rookie. You know, so this will help him make that transition to be a linebacker. Anybody that's a rookie, a first-year, second-year player, this is invaluable work. And then even for the veterans, it's good. It gives them a... Uh, measuring stick where they are conditioning wise in football and anything new that we're doing on offense and defense it um, it helps them with the emphasis on the, the passing game during the, this time what have you seen from the cornerbacks and, and the depth you have there uh, they've done well you know we feel we've got good depth there you know we've got Brown and Carlos and uh, Culliver and Brock and um, we've picked up Parrish from the free agency you know, I think we've got good depth there, and we've got a couple young guys that are trying to fight their way onto the squad, so I feel good about our corner depth. What kind of uh, player was Michael Thomas for you at, uh, at Stanford? He was a good player. Mike was um, a corner when I got there at Stanford, but we, um, we had a need at safety, and I felt that he would be, be better served for us at safety, so he played safety in our base defense, and then he played our nickelback in our sub defense, which you play a lot in college. So. He was a nickel and a safety for us at Stanford, which is what he's playing here. And Mike's a good football player. Played a lot of, had a lot to do with the success that Stanford's had here recently. And hopefully he'll be able to transition that into the NFL. Does he have a, a bit of an advantage, you know, right off the bat because of his familiarity with the A little bit, but really our defense is a lot different than what we played at Stanford, you know, because the game's different. You know, the college game is played on a different field. It's played defending different offenses, you know, style of offenses than in the pro. There is some carryover. There is some calls that he would recognize and have a feel for, but not as much as you would think. It's a different game. You know, you had 28 turnovers last year, and turnovers seem to be kind of random from year to year. 28? Or no, how many? Plus 28. Plus 28. Thank you. Uh, 
38. 38. 38. They're hard to come by. Don't okay. cheat us. Okay, okay. But, you know, it doesn't seem like teams maintain that from year to year. If they have a big turnover year. They don't seem to do it again the next year. Um, what do you hope to do to kind of replicate we hope 38 to, we, we hope to match it and surpass it that's our goal mm -hmm. you know the point you're making has some truth to it you know those things kind of tend to come in bunches at times but the good thing we did last year most of the time we never we I don't believe we had a game where we got like six or seven of them you know we were we kind of had a lot of games where we got two three maybe four you know so we were fairly consistent there was only a couple games we didn't get any so I'm hopeful that um, we'll be able to continue that you had mentioned, uh, I think you mentioned last year that Justin Smith, you knew obviously he was good, you didn't realize he was quite this good. I don't know how much film you watched in the offseason, but was he even maybe better than you thought when you kind of looked again at what he did last year? Um, no, because I, what I saw during our season, I saw loud and clear. And, um, you know, he's definitely one of the top defensive linemen in, in the NFL, you know, because he's He's balanced, you know, he plays the run and rushes the passer equally well. He can play inside, he can play outside. You guys know to watch this, we play him outside on occasion. So he, he, he gives us versatility where we can line him up. He gives us tremendous run play and pass rush. And then his intangibles from his leadership and toughness, you know, are off the charts. So he's definitely one of the top two or three defensive linemen in the league. You talk about guys not having being on the downside of their career. Obviously, he's getting up there in age, but I mean, as part of his conditioning, his commitment kind of, I guess, takes some of his age out of the equation. No question. I mean, I've addressed this with some of the other guys that are starting to approach that part of the career. I haven't had to address it with Justin because he does it on his own. As you get older and play longer in the league, you have to take even much more better care of your body, and. He's one guy you don't have to, you know, and emphasize that with him with because he knows that and he does it and he loves to do it. So I think, I think many times guys um, could play another two, three years be if they had taken care of their bodies better. But, you know, as we all know that are standing here, most of us, things start to go down at a certain age that if you don't stay on top of it, you get behind the eight ball and he stays on top of it. I would expect that... Um, you know, I, I don't see the end for him yet. And, and, I, and I mean, t looking forward two, three years, I, I think he's still here and playing at a high level. Do you see the, the younger guys sort of following his example? I think I, definitely. I mean, it, it always helps when your best players are your hardest workers. And he, he definitely falls into that category. And it's easy for young guys to follow suit. Um, you know, I think it helped Alden last year. I think it helped guys like Dobbs. I think it's helped guys like Ray and Isaac develop. It's, he's had an effect on everybody because of his work ethic and toughness that it's infectious. I understand the idea that you can be a better team and not have the same record. Can you be a better defensive unit and not have the same stats that you had last year? Given up the That's possible. It really is. You know, a lot of it depends upon... Uh, you know, who you're playing, when you're playing them, how your whole team is playing. You know, you alluded to the 28, you were going with the plus 28, not the takeaways. We only gave up 10 turnovers last year on offense. That plays a big part in the how many points you give up in a game. You know, very seldom, I'm sure we probably led the league in field position as to where we started drives on defense compared to where the other teams did. So, you know, the, our offense being so efficient and not turning the ball over. Our kicking game, having the season they had as it relates to field position, plays a big part in only giving up a low amount of points. You talked about the corners. How about Paris Cox specifically? He's new. Uh, he seemed to have a good practice yesterday. He's doing well. We like Paris. He's, um, we got him playing nickel and corner, which is two different positions. There's no carryover from one to the other. You know, from an assignment and technique standpoint. And he's done well learning both those positions, and we're very happy to have him. He's given us added depth, and he's going to push for playing time if he continues the work that he's shown so far. Thank All right, everybody's last one, guys. Everybody's accepting a lot from this defense now. Um, obviously, in your career, you've been part of some very excellent defenses before. Does this have a chance to be one of your best ever? I mean, potentially, could this be the best defense that you've coached? <laughs> 
Uh, I would suppose you could say potentially, but you know, you got to do it week in and week out. You know, you can't um, uh, skip a couple steps along the way, and that's the thing we emphasize to our guys. We we're not looking at a 16-game schedule. We play one game at a time. I know you guys don't want to hear that, but that is my philosophy. You know, we're not looking to be the greatest defense in the history of the NFL. We're looking to be the best defense we can be in each and every game, and not and not look forward and then let the chips fall where they may.